if we win, we get mugs. Oh, I can't wait to get free drinks. I'm so get excited. It. Let's go. Let's we are live. What are we playing? Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. Best out of three. Okay. We're going rock, paper, scissors, and shoot. We win, we get marks, they win, we're gonna win, so we're getting marks. Get real. Look at him, look at him. Begin! One! So I was just thinking about something because I put a tweet out the other day, on my fantasy Twitter, and I was like, I'm gonna need help this summer with blogging, SEO, video editing, all that kind of shit that I kind of want to automate. I do all the technical work for everything I do, videos, marketing, all that kind of stuff. And uh, that takes a lot of my time. If I had that time for myself to, you know, work on growing the business and, and doing other things like that, you know, the growth would be a lot bigger. I put it out on Twitter and I have like a thousand followers on Twitter and I was like, does anyone want to help me this summer? Either blog for fantasy articles or do anything like that, video editing, I forget the other things I, I needed help with. But I had like 15 to 20 people email me, DM me, saying that they would definitely be interested. And it got me thinking about like the future of working and the future of not like myself, but people that are going into the workforce. And I just saw Gary V put up an Instagram post about, he's like, in a couple years, people are gonna wanna pay me $200,000 to work for me. And it made me think about like how true that is because the reason people DM me, right? And the reason people email me saying, I would love to help you out, I'd love to work for you is because I already put in all like the groundwork, the hard work to build up a following or like a platform, right? Like between the 5,000 subscribers on YouTube and the thousand Twitter followers and whatever it's gonna exponentiate this summer with uh, content and the more people that follow me basically for them they see that and they're like oh you know I don't have to do any of that stuff it's just a platform for me to already kind of showcase my skills and that's what it'd be giving exposure to those people that would help me it, it's value right they give me some of the work some of their time and it helps me bring in more people that you know just more content so that's what they're giving me and then in return I'm giving them a platform for exposure I want you guys to think about this like Gary V said people are gonna pay me two hundred thousand dollars to to come work for me. And that's like what I'm talking about on a whole nother level, right? It's it's like building your personal brand, like he's giving you a ridiculous opportunity because you know that that's like almost an investment to yourself. Now, obviously I'm not saying that like all you guys would pay $200,000 to go work for Gary Vee, but think about you know what you're interested in, say like your industry, right? Say uh, you're a website designer and you are inspired by or you follow some of the biggest creative agencies in the in New York City, right? And you love some of them and some of them have 500,000 followers or a million followers on Twitter or uh, Instagram, but it's almost impossible to get a job with them. Now, as an investment to yourself, would you pay $100,000, a down payment investment to lock up a guaranteed employment spot at that company or at that industry. A lot of you at first would say no, but then when you think about it, think about what you're paying for a college education. You're throwing down 30, 40, $50,000 a year to get an education so that you can get that piece of paper that says you graduated with this whatever degree. And that obviously doesn't guarantee, you know, nowadays that doesn't guarantee you like anything. It guarantees you not to be fucking crossed off the automatic resume calculator screen, right? When 100 people throw in their resumes for a job, if you don't have a bachelor's degree, you're automatically cut from that list. And that's really all it does for you nowadays. So I'm thinking like people who, you know, if you wanna get noticed, like this is a great example. If your like dream goal is to be an ESPN broadcaster, that's what you wanna do. You wanna be the next Scott Van Pelt. You wanna be the next whoever's on there that you inspire to be. You like going through four years of college and doing journalism and whatever it is, it's really not gonna get you anywhere near in the door in ESPN unless you are an incredibly talented person that just like stands out like that through whatever way. But what I'm saying is like building a personal brand is a way that you could do that. Like I guarantee a person who goes through a four year degree, gets his uh, bachelor's in journalism, also has like a, a bachelor a minor in communications and TV production or whatever has way less of a chance than a high school dropout but has built up a, a Twitter following of 5,000 10,000 people that connects with people in the industry via those social media platforms and stuff like that so if you're looking to get into like a unique industry or like it's very saturated where you're getting into and this is uh, this is not really towards like doctors or lawyers or anything like that this is for more like unique kind of positioning 
The only way you're gonna get noticed and stand out is by building a personal brand. And then, then people will be like, wow, this is really cool. Like you're giving valuable content. Like obviously we would love for you to come work for us or love to see like what you have to offer us. Again, this goes back to a lot of, I talk about this a lot on my channel. And if you're starting something or if you wanna get somewhere, it's always good to offer free work. If you wanna work at a, at a crazy agency in New York City, but you don't have a portfolio, go around to smaller agencies or go around to smaller businesses and be like, I wanna design this for you, design this for you, design this for you for free, right? You put in a little bit of time, but that's nothing compared to fucking four years of college that you're gonna put in just to get that piece of paper. So put in something for free, give value to other people, they'll give you something in return, right? That gives you experience, that gives you a testimonial, that gives you all this other kind of stuff that you could use as like a ladder, as a next step. Nowadays, there's no process, there's no route you could follow that will get you to where you wanna go other than you getting out there and like getting your name out there and getting exposure for yourself. For some of you guys, like if you're like a sports fan, right? If you follow this guy named Incarcerated Bob on Twitter, kind of like a piece of shit, but he's got a really big Twitter following. If there's a trade about to happen and no one really knows about it, sometimes he'll break the news and be the first one to report it. And he has like a following of 150,000 people, but he's kind of like a piece of shit. But I bet if he reached out to ESPN and was like, I want a job with you guys. These are, you know, I have such a big network of people. I have these sources, blah, 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 blah. They'd give it to him, even though it's not like politically correct. And it's not, he didn't go through the step-by-step -step process of getting a job at ESPN, like internship and then whatever it is, right? If you want to stand out and get somewhere, like you got to go put in the work by yourself. You're not going to have a cookie cut out path from college to internship to landing spot at, at entry level positioning. So it's just like, I don't really know, but the Gary V's post kind of like hit me and made me think about that. It's just, you know, in, in, in a couple years, would you pay the company that you wanted to work for a hundred thousand dollars? Like that might be a smarter investment than going to college, right? And putting that work in and then hoping something happens rather than or, or, or just investing time for free. You're not even, you don't even have to invest $100,000. You could imagine doing something for free for three years, building up a crazy portfolio. And that's what college should be realistically, is you building up a portfolio for your experience in the real world after college. But that's not what it is. You just invest money, invest money, invest money to get this piece of paper. But had you been investing yourself into experience and, and building up a portfolio, by the time those three or four years are done, do you know how good you're gonna be at your craft? You're gonna be way ahead of kids coming out of college that still don't know what they're really doing or don't have real world experience. So if I give one piece of advice, if you're trying to get into a unique industry, start now, start doing a portfolio, start building a portfolio, do shit for free. You build up your portfolio. From there, you'll get better and better and better each time. Yeah, the first few times you try to do something for, you know, like a client, it might be shitty, but that's the only way you learn. No one... No one has a fucking person that comes to their doorstep, drops off an envelope, and is like, here you go, you just, here's a uh, the username and password for a blog with 100,000 person email list. Like, that, that's not how the world works. You build, as Barstool would say, brick by motherfucking brick, and that's how you get out there. So it's Tuesday morning, otherwise known as Titty Tuesday. About to get a pump in at the gym. But first, we're gonna film a little video, so I'm setting up the studio. This is what it looks like. This is it, this is behind the scenes. I'm doing a fantasy video. I usually do it out there in the other room, but I, I kind of want to get a setup that's constant and that I do all my videos from and it gives like a cool kind of background. So we have the belt, we have the computer that I, that I use my notes for, and then I just have the camera set up. It's that simple. You got to make sure you got good lighting. Otherwise, I like the background like that. The video I'm doing today is, or the one I'm showing you, I'm filming for is, uh, is a mock draft. So first round mock draft, like a fake draft of what fantasy football drafts are gonna look like next year, like the top 10 picks or whatever. Like when I do these vlogs, nothing is set up. I just take my phone out, take my camera out and talk into the camera. Anything that's happening throughout the week, like for, for, for instance, like right now, I'll just take it out and show you guys what I'm doing. These fantasy football ones, I will definitely take more time prep for because that's a lot of like notes and stats and shit I have to be ready for. So I just figured I'd show you guys kind of what I'm doing, what it looks like in the back in the bike round. Now this will probably take me, the blog post that I did for it, which is the notes that I use for the actual video, probably took me maybe two hours to do, maybe even longer than that. And the filming of the video will probably take me about 45 minutes to an hour, and then I have to upload it, edit it, which will take another hour to an hour and a half, and then upload it to YouTube, which it's just like a long process, which is trying why I'm trying to automate the process and trying to bring on other people. So if I can, you know, find someone that likes the video edit or wants the video edit for me, and I could film these videos and shoot it right over to them for them to do that, that saves me like an hour, an hour and a half time that I don't have to do, you know? The hard part about that is like, I feel like when you're building something like I'm doing, it's like you feel like everything you do needs to have a little bit of your own touch on it. I know it sounds crazy, but if I'm not the one video editing, sometimes I feel like my personality won't come across in how the videos are edited. But then again, I feel like if I gave it to someone else to do, they would probably 
surprise me and come back and I'll be like, wow, this is actually fucking awesome. Who knows? It's just something I'll have to try out and see how I like it. All right, so I just got back from the gym. I was literally letting the video upload. I finished editing after I did it and that probably took me, the editing took a lot longer than I thought, but I wanted to get into like, I wanna show you guys, cause I wrote down exactly what I wanna do with the video now that it's done. Show you guys all the background stuff that goes into it and that there is a lot of work behind it. And this is not just me, this is any content creator. Anyone who creates any kind of content, I can guarantee you probably puts in like five times the amount of time or whatever you think they put into it. But I also think that in the long run, over the next like five to 10 years, the only way that you're gonna build a successful business is by spending most of your time creating content, creating valuable content. Upload the video, which I basically did. I have to upload it to YouTube now. Create the thumbnail, I'll write a good description, that's big for like, SEO and keywords when people are, you know, searching on YouTube. I have to post like a, a little thing about the video on Instagram for it, post on Twitter, post on the Facebook group, email out to my email list, to letting them know that there's a new video up and, and whatever. Also write an Instagram post for today that's not relevant to the video. There's all these little things that take, you know, five minutes here, 10 minutes there that add on an extra hour, two hours to each piece of content that you do make. So it's like, yes, a 20 minute video might I might post today, but realistically the background of that video and getting it out, like creating the content and distributing the content is a long, a long process. And it kind of sucks to be honest with you. I mean, but it's it's what you have to do. It's like all these things don't work together unless, you know, it's the weakest link kind of thing. Some of them might not be as important, but none of them are gonna work unless you do all of them. Boys were selling crack while they were smoking speed. His only type of profit come from overseas. I'm tiptoeing out your bank, hope you don't speak to me. I'm tip, hope you don't speak to me. Hope you don't speak to me. Tiptoeing out your bank, hope you don't speak to me. Hope you don't speak to me. This song right here, Wasted by Peking Duck, P-E-K-I-N-G, Duck, Wasted, song of 2018. first heard that song I got so fucking excited that I went onto Instagram and I DM'd the band telling them how fucking good the song was and they wrote me back they're like thank you legend they call everyone legend for some reason they're like thank you legend it means everything I'm like y'all mean fucking everything songs a goat it's Wednesday right now February 14th aka Valentine's Day I hope y'all have a Wonderful Valentine's Day. If you don't have a Valentine, your mother should be your Valentine. I have a Valentine this year, but I still get stuff from my mom. Bring her home some flowers, I write a handwritten card, a lot of chocolate, a lot of candy, the stuff she likes. And this is just like relationship advice. A lot of people try to be romantic. A lot of people try to be creative when it comes to this stuff, especially, and, and this is all for all gift giving, whether it's your significant other's birthday. Stay within yourself or your relationship, if that makes sense. Romance, being romantic is not universal. Like not every girl wants to go out to $150 steak dinner on Valentine's night, right? You know you and your significant other and your relationship better than anyone else. So don't try to fit yourself into the same crowd as what you think you should be doing, right? If your girlfriend likes fucking McDonald's or then she likes steak and shrimp then do that because she'll remember that and she'll like it better and it's more romantic I'm telling you just be stay within yourself if you're ever lacking for ideas This happens a lot because people will be like, oh, I don't know what to get my girlfriend for her birthday I don't know what to get whatever it is literally the next time you hang out with your girlfriend or for girls your boyfriend Listen to them talk for one hour and they will tell you in those sentences in those paragraphs Ten different things that they want you could be sitting there and they'll be like oh I need like oh, I wish I got this or I wish I had this or whatever it's shit they usually blow off but I swear within hanging out with your significant other with for like an hour two hours whatever one night one day you can get 10 different gift ideas and that's stuff that they mention. and then so when you get them that it seems super thoughtful 
but in reality, it's really not that hard. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyways, we're going to a, uh, actually going on a little double date Valentine's, uh, night. So me and Alyssa are going with Steve and Heather to, uh, a BYOB paint, like, art painting class. So it's basically, there's an instructor, instructor, and there's one picture that everybody's painting in the class. They tell you and they instruct you how to do it, and usually these people's paintings comes out really well, so I'm kind of excited because I'm gonna hang that shit up here. Maybe. And it's all BYOB, so you bring your own food, you bring your own drinks, so we're probably gonna get wasted. Have a good Valentine's night. That's why I'm in a good mood and I'm dancing because it's gonna be a fun time. So, uh, again, I hope y'all had a good Valentine's day, night, whatever it is. Love is a good thing. Love's a beautiful thing. It's all about the good things. But for now... I want to get you. Just put it on the poll. Who did it better, you and me? Like, what is this? Oh, yeah, we do need a poll. You and me need a poll. You know what? From from the screen, the lettering looks cool, but in real life, yeah, it's um, <laughs> disgusting. I need a pull. Oh, far away, that looks so on. bad. Wait, 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 let me, let me see. <laughs> Who really went on a date? You know I've just been doing that <laughs> the whole time. So it's Thursday morning. I'm about to weigh myself for the first time, and I, I don't even know. 167.8. Now, I feel like low-key that might be because I've been eating like shit lately. Like after the BYOB art place. Let's see, Alyssa got me this, this bag of treats. First of all, these are the GOAT. I don't think I've ever gone to a movie without eating them. Oh, word. I can drink a Monster right now instead of go getting coffee. Monster, like, you kidding me? That's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Um, what was I even saying? So yeah, I think I'm gonna start putting on a little bit of weight, and it's not just because I'm getting fat, but I'm trying to put on, like, when you're trying to build muscle in certain areas, like, I I mean, I like my, my body, right? It's pretty aesthetic, but there are areas, like my upper chest, that I wanna grow, and I could see it. It's like, it's already me putting on weight. I could see more muscle developing there, and I want better shoulders, like a little more in the delts and stuff. And also like even building the abs. But if you wanna do, I talked about this last video, if you want to have abs that pop out more, right? You can get your body fat really low and then your abs will show, or you could build muscle on top of them so you don't even need as low of a body fat percentage in order for them to show. And that's where I'm at now, because me at 168, is this is 100% not the leanest that I've been over the last few years. But like these are, this is probably, in good lighting, this is like, probably the best my abs have looked because this is the most I've consistently worked them out over the last month or two. I could see it in my chest. I know it probably doesn't look like a lot to you guys, but I could see it in my upper chest, the more muscle developing here. So I think I'm gonna be putting on a little bit more weight over the next month or two months or something. Not a lot, like I'm not gonna be eating like a fat fuck. I don't know. 168 is not something I'd normally be like, oh sh. I would normally be like, oh shit, you know, like, Cut back a little bit, trying to drop down to like 160, 162, but maybe I do want to put on a little more weight. Anyways, this is my painting from last night. Doesn't look like terrible in the morning, actually kind of. Like what kind of fucking bottle of wine is this? I never thought like anyone, you know, I, I've seen people go to these BYOB classes and I'm like, oh, no one ever comes out of those things with a bad painting. I think I was the first one possibly ever to do that. It was fun though, I had a good time. So that's gonna end this video. I'm sorry for the amount of time I spent on the screen shirtless. I walk around my house shirtless 95% of the time. Anyways, as always, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We'll be back next Saturday, as always, with next week's vlog. On Saturday, we're going into New York, into the city, to celebrate Steve's birthday. We're starting off at this place called Mad Dog and Beans. We're going in around happy hour. So, any of y'all watch this and happen to see this Saturday during the day, you want to come join us in the city, Mad Dog and Beans in Midtown. The place is known for having, like, crazy different marks and you know it's really always mark season people ask me when does mark season start i always say it's like that first uh, this is like definitely like an east coast thing probably like a jersey new york thing there's always one day in the spring where you know it's been cold all winter it's been shitty and then all of a sudden it's like 65 and sunny and everyone's in a good mood and you know like spring just started that's low-key when mark season starts for the rest of y'all mark season's always Mark season for me. I get off topic like that. What was I even saying? Oh, Mad Dog and Beans. Yeah, this place has like crazy Marks. They do like, pit, you know, they have like towers of beer at a lot of places. This place has towers of Marks, all different flavors, all different kinds. So we're going to be there probably around 5.30 or 6.30. So if you want to come through, it's a free country. So that's going to wrap it up. Thumbs up, subscribe. See y'all next week.